Hey, what's up you guys? Aftershow Reacts here and today I'm going to be doing a video for you guys letting you know my thoughts uh, on Season 2 of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, I plan to do this with all of the seasons, uh, including uh, the Supernatural seasons and the Vampire Diaries ones as well. So this will be the first uh, video that I've done about this. Um, so, season two, uh, I've, I'm gonna explain my thoughts to you on what I thought of the season, um, along with some of your questions that you've asked me about the season, uh, which I will be reading out to you guys. A lot of you guys asked some really, really interesting questions. Uh, a few of them are the same, um, and I've tried to bundle them together to the best of my ability. Um, hopefully I can answer your questions to the best of my ability. Uh, <laughs> um, so I think we'll go into the questions first and then I will give my overall thoughts on Buffy season two and we'll just go from there. All right, so without further ado, here comes the questions. Denver McCaw asked, what is your favorite and least favorite episode of the season? The same question was asked by Beauty Effulgent and Slayer Vision who asked why as well. Now, uh, my favorite episode uh, of season two I couldn't really narrow down properly. Uh, it would either have to be Innocence or Becoming Part 2. Uh, Passion came in at a close, you know, a close third, I guess, or second. Um, basically, they were just really, really well written episodes. And I don't know, I felt like the, uh, the writing was just a lot better. Um, it knew what it wanted to do and it made me feel things <laughs> and it's it's sad when I feel things um, so yeah uh, definitely either innocence or becoming part two were my favorites as for least favorite uh, that would have to be killed by death uh, I will go into more detail as to why I didn't like that one a little bit later, uh, as someone asked me a question to do with that uh, episode, so we'll just move on to the next question. <laughs> Dave Angel said, as someone who watched the show when it came out, I would like to know, do you find it dated in any way, or is it not really noticeable? And Blue Amarath also asked a very similar question. Uh, I do notice some things are very dated, um, like for example in the Reptile Boy episode, uh, the big snake figure thingy was very, uh, very 90s, uh, and it's a, a lot of the time, because I've always grown up with technology and stuff, uh, I always figure, why can't they just call each other? Why can't they do this? And then I think it's the 90s. They don't really have that at their disposal. Um, although, didn't they have like those flip phone thingies? Did, were those not around at this time? I don't know. I just feel like they should have a better way of contacting each other. Um, yeah, some of the effects aren't great. But like, I wouldn't really say it's that dated because I found it reasonably believable and I was always encaptured in whatever was going on so I don't know <laughs> I, I guess in a way but n not really I, I enjoyed it nonetheless I'm probably going to butcher this one Sasenje Bazasu Dombi asked if I was satisfied with the season finale I really hope I didn't butcher that name too badly uh, as for being satisfied with the finale, I, uh, I'd have to say yes. Um, look, when I started this show, people would always tell me, you know, it gets better, it gets better. Um, but like, 
straight off the bat. I was intrigued by it. I was so interested by it. Um, and then people would say season two is much better. But, like, I really enjoyed season one. Like, honestly, I didn't know how it could get any better until I watched season two. <laughs> and I understood. Um, but, yeah, the uh, season two finale really... Um, it really tore into the emotions and, and really um, really impressed me with the kind of writing that they can do, that the Joss Sweden could do. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a like, um, like a cliffhanger leading on to the next season, but um, you know, some TV shows just don't do it, so you know, I was, I was still, I mean, I guess it was sort of a little bit of a cliffhanger, like what, what's Buffy gonna do next? Um, but yeah, I was, I was overall satisfied with the finale. Marcus Clem asked, overall, what did you think of the thruple relationship between Angelus, Spike, and Drusilla? Uh, overall, the thruple relationship between them was very, uh, it's not something that I've seen before. It was, um, it's quite interesting. Uh, I'd really like to know, uh what went on in the background, uh, like, in the years before this. Um, obviously they were, like, a, a group of vampires that would go around killing people. Um, but I feel like the jealousy that Spike has towards Angel goes back a little bit deeper, and I just want to know where that stems from. Well, because Angelus was such a dick, um, it, like, I want to know how, why is he like that, um, and why does Spike hate him so much? Why does he have such uh, a fear of losing Drusilla, and why does Drusilla uh, like the idea of um, like them both fighting over her? Uh, yeah, she's just uh, it's just a very interesting concept having all three of them be the bad guys, but also having a bit of a um, disagreement together, if that makes sense. Uh, I really liked it. That was the long-winded answer that you were waiting for. <laughs> Wheelie Girl asked a very interesting question. Do you have any candy episodes yet? You might call them guilty pleasures. They're episodes that aren't necessarily that great, but you like them anyway. Candy episodes. Uh, well, I'd have to say no at this point. Um, though it depends what you would say a candy episode would be. Uh, would that be like filler? Filler that you enjoy? Because at the moment I don't, uh, I don't really have one. Um, I tend to upload the ones that are more interesting to you guys, um, and so far, um, my friend that has created a list of all the ones to upload, um, has been spot on, they've been great episodes, um, and honestly, I, I don't have any candy episodes as of yet, uh, perhaps there are more in the upcoming seasons. I, I hope you can't hear that. That's a very loud noise. Um, yeah, so the upcoming seasons probably have some very good candy episodes, as you would call them. Uh, but as of yet, no, I do not have any candy episodes. No Diggity asked, Did you ever go back and watch any single moment from season two multiple times because you couldn't get enough of it? Uh, well, as for this question, um, well, I have to go back and watch a whole lot of the episodes as I'm, as I'm editing them for you guys and getting them out as a reaction video for you. Um, so I did watch a lot of them a few times, but as for, like, going back and actually watching certain scenes, um, I think the scene that I watched the most would have to be the scene where Buffy kills Angel. Yeah. 
I feel like I, I, I went back and watched that a couple of times because it was it was very emotional, it was very sad. And it just it was overall a great scene. Um just the whole fight scene, uh the point where she says, uh, I think it was um no, I think it was it was Angel Angelus that said, uh, you have no weapons, no friends and no hope. Um, take all that away and what's left and the fact that Buffy realizes that it's her that's left. It was just a really powerful moment and she Sarah Michelle Geller's acting is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh and whenever she cries, I cry. I swear to god I can't it was it was just great. So to answer your question, uh it would definitely have to be the scene where Buffy and Angel have it out in Becoming Part 2. Zach Patton asked, with the way Season 2 ended, and specifically where it left Buffy emotionally and mentally, how do you think her personal arc will play out in Season 3? Where is she going to go from here? Kristen Carter also asked, where is Buffy headed at the end of Season 2? And do you think that she is rejecting her role as a slayer by leaving town? And also how her friends and mother will react. I'm going to answer all of that in one question. So, I think that Buffy leaving town uh, was a little bit... Um, she, she's running away from her problems. Uh, and that's never good to do. I mean, she did have to say goodbye to the love of her life. Uh, by killing him, and that is a very emotional thing to do, and of course, it, it, it triggers the response, fight or flight, and uh, she, she definitely fought and then flew. Uh, but um, yeah, so I think that she is definitely running away from her responsibilities. I feel like her mum will definitely be missing her. Um, she will definitely be regretting the decision of kicking her out. Um, and I really hope that she does come back soon. I don't know. I think that she is running away from her responsibilities. And hopefully her friends and everyone can get her back into what she does best. And that is slaying vampires. Kristen Carter also asked, uh, which season two ship was your favourite? Shiri also asked, what did you think about the couples in season two, especially Xander and Cordelia? So, the couples in Season 2, uh, who did we have? We had Giles and Jenny, Angel and Buffy, Willow and Oz, Cordelia and Xander. Is that it? Oh, uh, Spike and Drusilla. Um, and Drusilla and Angel. <laughs> or Angelus. A lot of you have mentioned in the comments below uh, that there was little breadcrumbs as to the relationship of Cordelia and Xander and how it was building up all season. I did not notice any of it, I'm not going to lie, but they were fighting a whole lot in that episode and I don't know. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't a huge fan of it to begin with, but I feel like it is growing on me a little bit more. I feel like Cordelia as a character, because of Xander, is growing a lot more. Um, Whereas before she was just a socialite, she didn't care about anyone else. Uh, I feel like now she's definitely starting to care a bit more. Um, and I like character growth like that. As for Giles and Jenny, uh, may she rest in peace. Uh, that was very sad. I was really happy for Giles to actually be getting a love interest. And like he does deserve to be happy. Uh, it's just very unfortunate that, that she, oh, okay, not going to talk about it. There is a question later on about it, and I will talk about it then, and hopefully not cry. Um, <laughs> uh, as for Spike and Drusilla, I thought that they were absolutely fucking brilliant. I think that they played that amazingly, their roles amazingly. Like, uh, I think her name is Juliet Landu, Landau, I don't know, I hope I didn't butcher that. Uh, I think that she was absolutely phenomenal at being absolutely fucking insane. 
I wouldn't have thought that she wasn't insane. Like, I... Is she insane in real life? I... That was, like, on a whole other level. She was brilliant. Uh, as for Spike... I'll get into him later. Uh, but as a couple, I feel like they were great together. And when they introduced Angelus into that, well, I really liked that. And I want it to be explored a bit more. As for Buffy and Angel, I am a Angel shipper. Uh, I was very, very sad when he died, even though he was evil. <laughs> I just want my Angel back. Um, I think that my favourite couple, though, uh, this season, it was Buffy and Angel, until he turned into Angelus. Uh, and all of a sudden, Willow and Oz came out of the blue, and I just could not cope with how cute that was, because, honestly, his writing is so great, and I just love the way that he... He treats Willow, and she deserves to be happy because she's Willow. <laughs> uh, so I hope that answers your question. Willow and Oz are my favourite couples at this point in time. Monique Ocampo asked, What do you think about the dynamic between Spike and Buffy? Well, I feel like the dynamic between Spike and Buffy is very... Uh, it's, it's a very complex one, and I hope that it gets explored a bit more even though he uh he, he's left town i really do hope that he comes back uh because of this spike is like buffy's arch nemesis uh and i really like the idea of that uh the fact that when he was first introduced he was scoping her out trying to figure out what kind of slayer she is the way that she fights just watching her from a distance it was very I don't know. It was a little bit sexual, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Huh. This is a bit of a thinking question. What are your thoughts on the metaphorical aspects of the show? For example, the Slayer role being the path to becoming an adult. The existentialist ideas in Lie to Me and others, etc. Have you been picking up on those while watching? Asked by Eddie Brosnan. Uh, I'd have to answer that with a no. Uh, I'm so encapsulated with the idea of watching the show. A lot of these things just fly by my head, not even noticing what's going on. Uh, so the existentialist ideas um, in Light to Me, uh, a lot of people have pointed out that uh, the episode is all about a mission statement for the show and the, the, mission the mission statement is that you always have a choice. You don't have great choices, but you do have a choice. And I think that that sh shined through um, in Becoming Part 2 when she didn't have a great choice when she had to kill Angel, but she did it anyways because it was the only... It was what she had to do. Um, and I feel like that is a really good message to send in a TV show like this. Um, as for the path to being a slayer, like becoming an adult, uh, definitely. I, I do believe that, that that is what's happening. I mean, uh, at the end of season one, she, she was a 16-year-old girl and she got told she was going to die. And she quit. And it was like she was running away from maturing, you know? Um, and when she... Uh, when Willow had found those vampires, uh, had killed those people, those students that she knew, um, it was like she was accepting her... her mature... She was, like, accepting that she needs to become the Slayer. She needs to become an adult. She needs to... Uh, deal with this uh, in the best way that she can, which is, you know, slaying the, the master. And it, it shines through again in this season. Um, how she uh, has to accept 
um, her role as the Slayer. However, at the end of the season, it seems like she's trying to run away from it again. Um, whether or not she finally accepts and grows up into becoming an adult uh, by accepting her destiny for good um, will remains to be seen. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Um, that was a very thinking question and uh, I hope I answered it well. David Fryer asked, who is currently my favourite character? So, at the end of season one, my favourite character was without a doubt Willow. Um, I felt like she was the epitome of just an adorable character. Everything that, she, that came out of her mouth was just gold. I loved it. I just loved her. Um, and then came School Hard. Where we were introduced into Spike. And he was... Phenomenal. He was everything I could have asked in a character. Uh, and... Throughout the se the second season, I was struggling. Like, do I like Willow more? Do I like Spike more? Like, d and every time, every time I was thinking, okay, maybe I can just like them both the same. Spike would do something so epically great. Like he would just have the the most ridiculous one liner. Uh, like um, um. Uh, when uh, that 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 uh, Willy guy like drops him in the in the sewers, and he was talking about how um, he's gonna take him for a dinner and he was gonna take Angel for a dinner and a movie, uh, and um, he, that he's been hurt before. Like it was just ridiculous things like that. That just the quirks, the funny and, and ridiculous sarcasm. It just put it over the top for me, and I definitely, at this point in time, my favourite character is Spike. <laughs> That's the long-winded answer, again. Jaden J asked, What were your thoughts on the whole Angelus and Jenny scene in the episode Passion? Eric McLeod also asked, What was my reaction when I saw Angel killing Mrs. Callender and when Giles found her dead in his bed? Uh, now, to answer this question... Um, the second half of that question uh, is, if you watch the reaction video, um, my reaction was just, I bawled my eyes out. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, ha I couldn't, can I, yeah, can't even get my words out. I just couldn't handle it, really. Um, look, at that point, it was like, Angel was still someone that could be saved. Uh, he had turned into Angelus. Yes, he was killing people, but they weren't of consequence to the show. I mean, like, of course they're of consequence. They have families, they obviously matter to the world. But they didn't matter to me, um, as an audience member. I knew Jenny Calendar. We knew Jenny, yeah, like, we all knew Jen Jenny because she was a character that, you know, we'd grown attached to and all that kind of stuff. And... The minute that he snaps Jenny's neck, uh, it was a minute, it was the moment that everything changed for him. He was no longer someone that you could just save. He was someone that actually killed a character, and that'll have repercussions. So if he was to ever be saved, um, Giles would never be able to forgive him for killing Jenny and no one like everyone wouldn't forgive him for that because that is something that he has to live with that is someone that they personally loved and he killed and it was just it hurt me and it broke me and I just still reeling from it and I it it, it was it was it was a very sad, sad episode, and I will miss her. She was good for she was good for Giles. I have to say. Here's another name I'm probably going to butcher: Tazuki Galeta. 
In the last episode, did you notice the coming out metaphor when Buffy told her mum she was the Slayer? What did you think of the whole scene and including the interaction between Spike and Joyce? Yes, I did actually notice the metaphors in that scene. Um, obviously, there are some people out there that are gay and they do go through that kind of thing um, when they're trying to tell their parents that they are gay um, and their parents don't take it the right way and it's very sad that, you know, that kind of stuff still happens in this day and age. Um, but you know what? Look, if if that's how you feel, love is love. You do you. Um, but yeah, it was very sad that Joyce kicked her out and I'm really annoyed at Joyce. And as for the scene with Spike and Joyce interacting, that was hilarious. And honestly, it was just really funny. Christina Joy's Hamsters has a few questions. Did you expect Angel to become Angelus? Do you think we'll ever see Angel again? How do you imagine Spike's past? What kind of person do you think he was before he got turned? And did you expect Buffy to be this awesome when you first started watching it? No, I did not expect Angel to become Angelus. In that whole scene, I thought he was dying. And I was getting really emotional about that because I don't want Angel to die. I really hope that we see Angel again. Um, I mean, technically, of course we will. Because at the beginning of season four of Buffy, uh, the Angel spin-off series begins. I'm not sure if that's set in the past or the future or the... At this point, probably the past. Because he's dead. But like... We will get to see Angel again because I will be watching that show when it begins. As for Spike, uh, in the past, I imagine... Actually, I have no idea. I, I have absolutely no clue as to what kind of um, person Spike was before he became a vampire. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I can't even... This show, with its expectations, I've learnt not to, like... Not not to assume something because the expectation subversion is just insane. Every time I expect something, something else happens and it's, it's... I'd rather just find out from the show, honestly. Hopefully we find out at some point. When beginning Buffy, um, I didn't expect it to be this great. Uh... A lot of people over the years, especially my friend that has created the list, uh, has told me that Buffy is great. Buffy is the best show out there. There is nothing like Buffy. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 you say that all the time, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I was one of those. Until one day, I said to her, I'm going to watch it. And... I'm going to watch it with people. I'm going to create reaction videos of watching it because it's my first time watching. And it's going to be great. People are going to watch it with me, you know. They're going to experience my first time. And she literally started celebrating. She's like, I'm going to create a list. You don't have to react to every episode. It's fine. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Why am I not reacting to all the episodes? And she explained to me that some of them are just not great. They aren't all that great to react to. Um, so she sat down. She started typing on her computer. And wrote me a list. And I was like, these... There's the seven seasons. Seven seasons. Seven seasons of this show, and you want me to react to him? You, you want me to watch this? She said, trust me, once you begin, you won't be able to stop. And I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't believe you. I don't believe you for one minute. I got about halfway through the first episode, and I was like, I may have a problem. I may have a problem. 
So I watched the whole first episode and the whole next episode. And then I realised that maybe my friend was right. I mean, this is a great show. But it wasn't as great as she explained. But then I kept watching. And I got to the first season finale and it was like, wow. Maybe she is right. So the answer... So <laughs> and then when I got to the point that I'm at right now, <laughs> she was right. It is better than I ever imagined. Um, and I'm so glad that I could share this with you guys because it is great. I love it. I, I really did. To answer your question, no, I did not expect Buffy to be this great, this awesome, but I'm so unbelievably grateful that I started watching it with you guys. MK Merx asked, are you going to react to all of the episodes from one point on? Or are you going to watch only a select few? Also, how would you choose which episodes to react to? Uh, this is a question that I have answered before, but I just thought I would reiterate uh, since you specifically asked this question. Um, so, my friend has created a list uh, and I'm going to be reacting to that list. Uh, if there are any episodes in specifically that you want me to react to, you can leave them in the comment section below, but just know that they're probably already on the list if they're really important. Um, I do have some filler episodes in the, on the lists uh, because uh, my friend told me that they're great episodes and I, I, I trust her judgement at this point. Uh, so no, I will not be reacting to all of the episodes from one point on. Um, however, some seasons I will be reacting to more episodes than not. So I think uh, in season 3 I will be reacting to 20 out of 22 episodes. Um, I know it sounds a little bit silly, why don't I just do them all? Um, because some episodes just don't have as react worthy content as you might hope. Also I don't have a whole lot of space on my computer. Uh, so I'm always having to constantly film, edit, upload, delete. Film, edit, upload, delete, all that kind of stuff. And it's just, I don't want to lose anything. I don't want to mess up anything because I really enjoy doing this for you guys. And I really enjoy uh, having this kind of community, I guess. And so, yes, to answer your question, no, I will not be reacting to all of the episodes from a point on. But I do have a list and I want you to know that it is a great list and I hope you guys enjoy it. Here's another thinking question. Hanif Muhammad asked, how much do you think a vampire's behavior is influenced by who they were when they had a soul? Why is Angela so evil without humanity while Spike and Drusilla still have a trace of humanity left even without a soul? So, as for this question, I I was thinking that myself while watching the show. I didn't understand why Spike, why he had so much love in his heart for Drusilla. Although he was evil. But An Angelus was just evil. He was despicable he was trying to hurt everyone that, that he loved and it just I have no idea why um I don't I don't know how to answer this question because obviously maybe I'll find out why uh, how Spike was before he was turned before when he had a soul I don't know maybe we'll find that out maybe not um but Angel, before he was turned, he was a drunk. He was getting kicked out of pubs. I mean, he hit on some woman in, like, in the middle of nowhere and got turned into a vampire. So, like, obviously he doesn't have standards. Um, <laughs> so maybe because of the way that he was as a human, that's why he doesn't really have 
humanity. Um, because before he was turned, he didn't really love anything. Maybe Spike loved something. And that's why he was... He's the way he is. I don't know. That's just what I got from it. <laughs> Chip Snyder asked, Out of all of the monsters Buffy has faced, which one scared you the most? And to answer this question, I will be reading out another question. What did you think of the episode Killed by Death and the monster De Kinderstad? Asked by Jesse James 1992. Well, I had to kill by death. I hated it. It scared me absolutely freaking silly. I was... That monster with the eyes, that like, that came out of their eyes, it was just... I, I, <laughs> to Kinderstad was literally the scariest thing I've ever seen. And I've been watching Supernatural. It was scary. I don't... I don't... <laughs> it, I would probably... if I if, These are rewatch-worthy shows, okay? So... When I am finished with these, I will probably watch them again. I will skip that episode. It was scary. I just... They scared me. And I hope that there isn't anything as scary going forward in the show. Also, the episode just seemed a little bit out of place. Uh, I don't know, it just seemed a little bit... Like, the writing was getting so good for season two, and then all of a sudden they had this episode, and it wasn't that great of writing. It just seemed like a filler episode. I don't know. Debbie Sib asked, As a Bangel shipper, did you find the show more or less interesting when Angel reverted into Angelus and went all evil? Well, as a Bangel shipper, I did really, really, really love Angel and Buffy together. I think they were really, really, really cute. And... Like, the big bads that we had this season were absolutely great. Like, we had Drusilla, and we had Spike, and they were fun. They were really, really fun. Compared to the Master, they were on a whole other level. When Angel reverted into Angelus, it was very sad. Um, and it mirrors what sometimes happens. Um, sometimes you can sleep with a guy. Or a girl. <laughs> And they can change at the drop of a dime immediately after. And I feel like that's the message that they were trying to show. That uh, sometimes things change really quickly. Um, and that really, really upset me. Um, because I just loved them together. However... When he turned into Angelus, he became, I have to admit, he became so much more interesting as a character. I mean, before he was mysterious and everything, but we learnt so much more about him. We learnt why he was one of the most feared vampires out there. And really, I did like the show a lot better when he turned into Angelus. Um, hopefully we'll get to see him again one day, which is sad to say because, like, I don't want my characters getting killed again, but it was enthralling watching and, and I'm waiting for him to do all these different things, like, is he going to kill another person? Is he going to severely hurt someone? What's he going to do next? It was just, I was encapsulated in the show. It was great. Debbie Sib also asked, Xander is a very controversial character due to his jealousy over Buffy and his random tendency to say some less than appropriate comments about the girls in his life. What are your overall feelings on him? Well, when Angel turned back into Angelus, Xander had a line, I think it was like, that he hated Angel long before everyone else. Which I think is very unfair because, well, he he didn't like him because he was in love with Buffy and, and he wasn't going to get Buffy and he kept thinking that Angel was some obstacle he had to get over so that he could get to be with Buffy. But the fact that he thought of it that way bothered me because, like, that's just not 
how it was. Buffy just wasn't interested in him in that way. Um, however, thinking about it now, his hate for vampires would stem probably from the very beginning of the show. Um, his friend Jesse was turned into one and he had to stake him and it was really sad. Um, however, like they don't ever mention it ever, but I feel like perhaps that's why he doesn't like Angel mostly. Um, and the fact that in the last episode of season two, he actually says that everyone, like he doesn't tell Buffy that uh, Willow is doing the spell again and he just straight up says kick his ass. That fucking bothered me because mate, you have no, like this is not your choice. This is not your choice. It's not fair. Like she could have delayed him a lot more. He wouldn't have to die. Like it was just, what, what gives him the right to choose whether or not Angel gets cured or not. It's just, I feel like he is a very self-righteous character and, um, I don't know, out of the, out of all of the main characters, he's probably my least favourite from, like, the Scoobies. Like, if, if we're going, like, Buffy, Xander, Willow, Giles, yeah, uh, Xander's probably my least favourite out of all of them. Um, I just don't like his self-righteous attitude sometimes and how he does say some very inappropriate things as jokes, but, like, uh, he, he asked Buffy on her birthday if she wanted a pre-birthday spanking, and I was like, hmm, it's a little creepy. Funny, but creepy. I don't know. Um, I do like Xander as a character. I feel like, um, he's definitely growing. But I feel like he decides too much, and I don't know. I feel like he always thinks that he's right, when he, a lot of the time he's not. Lex asked, A lot of people hold season 2 as their favourite season, but as mentioned prior, the quality of the show and writing does really begin to shine in season 3. With that in mind, how do you feel about the quality of the show so far? So the quality of the show so far has been really reliant on uh, non-filler episodes. So there's uh, currently in season th season two there is about there's about six or so episodes that are filler, maybe maybe a bit more, um, and the rest of the season is the story arc of the, the season. So like you know Spike, Buffy, Angel, all that drama. Um, and basically, the quality of the show, uh, consists of filler episodes that don't really make sense to the narrative, and then you've got the narrative. And I feel like the quality is much, much better when they're going with the narrative and the story arc of the show. However, you do have to have some fillers sometimes, and hopefully, as the show progresses along, the filler episodes either go away... <laughs> or get more better and intertwined with better writing um, into the overall story arc and I'm just, yeah, I, I like the quality of the show that it is at the moment. Um, so far season 2 has definitely been a step up from season 1 um, and I'm hoping that season 3 is a step up from season 2 so I guess, it, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like the quality of the show. If, if that answers your question, I, I hope it does. You have a message, Spirit Mediums, asked, Did you know that the actress for Cordelia was supposed to originally play the part of Buffy and the actress for Buffy was supposed to play Cordelia? I was wondering if you would prefer it how they originally planned it or if you love it even more the way things are set. So, I had no idea about this. Um... However, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the way that they did keep things. Um, I feel like Sarah Michelle Gellar does a phenomenal job as being Buffy Summers and Cordelia does a phenomenal job being Cordelia. Um, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't picture it any other way. Um, 
I'm, I'm glad that they went with the way that they went. Johnny Tightlips asked, what are your thoughts on Willow as a character so far? I feel like Willow is amazing. Uh, she is literally the embodiment of everyone and everyone that was ever awkward at high school, which I was one of those. Um, and Alison Hannigan just does a great job um, conveying that. Um, I don't know if you can hear my dogs, but they're barking. Uh, <laughs> And basically, I just feel like she's a great character. Uh, she's uh, just gotten a little bit into witchcraft, which she shouldn't be doing, I don't think. And uh, hopefully that doesn't end badly for her, um, because I know that witchcraft can end badly for some people. I'm assuming, I have no idea, actually. She could be like a total badass. Maybe that was just her one and only spell. But yeah, I really do love Willow as a character. She was my favourite character until Spike just crept on up in there. So, yeah. Shocking Development asked, Did you know it was supposed to be Oz rather than Jenny who died at the hands of Angelus? Also, which death would you have preferred? I had absolutely no idea of this. Um... I think I, I, I would know what to do with myself if that actually happened. Uh, and as for which death I would prefer, I would say none. They should both be alive. Everyone should just be alive. It was too sad to watch, okay? I'm having flashbacks. Luke O'Quinn asked, Do you think that anything that Angel did when he didn't have his soul should be held against him? In other words, is Angel to blame for anything that Angelus did? Or should he be held responsible for anything that happened in that period of time? See, this is a very interesting question. Um, because is Angel responsible for killing Miss Calendar? Should he be punished for what Angelus did? Uh, and I... I Personally, I don't think that I could answer this question either because I'm not in that scenario. I feel like in scenarios like that, you need to actually be in that scenario. Like, um, I personally didn't lose Miss Calendar, but Giles did. And I feel like it would be completely... Um, within his character not to forgive him um, and to... I don't know. We know Angel as a character would take responsibility for it because he would feel really bad because he has a soul and all. I don't know. <laughs> Todd Johnson asked, will you be watching all seven seasons and will you be reacting to the spin-off called Angel? Right, so I am reacting to all seven seasons of Buffy, every single season, um, and as soon as uh, Angel starts, which is at the beginning of season four of Buffy, I will be watching them intertwined. So this means uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday will be Buffy and Angel Day, instead of just Buffy. So if... Uh, I'm going to try and make sure that the, the list has been written, okay? So, the way the list has been written is uh, she's tried to keep them intertwined. So, uh, she looked up a Buffy and Angel guide of how to watch them and she's put them in order. So, there might be two episodes of Angel, one episode of Buffy, one week. And then the next week, there could be two episodes of Buffy, then an Angel episode. So it really depends on the, the, the way that the watch list is presented. Um, so yes, I will definitely be watching Angel and it will be uh, together. So I'll be watching them simultaneously. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Scully the Skull asked, what do you want to see in season three? Personally, I would like to see Angel return somehow. 
because I missed my banjo. I want to see more Spike. But unfortunately, I'm not getting either of these things. Because Angel is dead. And Spike has left town. Uh, I would like to see... I don't know. I'm just... I would like to see a better Big Bad than Angelus, Spike, and Drusilla. Yeah. I think that, that answers the question. Alright, uh, I'm filming this on another day than I answered the questions. I didn't have enough time that day. So, season two of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What were my thoughts? Um, well, I thought it was amazing. I really did. Um... The angel turning into Angelus twist was... Who knew? Who knew? I was expecting him to die. And and I loved Spike and Drusilla. They were absolutely great. Um, they were everything I could ask in villains. And I really hope they come back in the future. Um, I'm not sure... I just... I, I, there was a little bit too many filler episodes for my liking, and they weren't all that great. Um, I hope they get filled, uh, smoothed out later on in the series. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I, I don't really have much to say about it since uh, I, I answered a lot of questions which basically summarised my thoughts on it. So there is one last thing that I would like to do in this video for you guys, and that is predict what I think is going to happen next season. Uh, I'm only going to do three. Um, hopefully that's good enough for you guys. Alright, so let's go. Uh, in season three, I think that Buffy will have a new love interest. That's what I think. I don't know how it will go down. Um, and it's going to make me very upset because I love my Bangel. Um, but I think that she will have another love interest. Um, that's number one. My second prediction for season three is that something will happen between Willow and Oz. And Oz will leave. Um... I love Willow and Oz together, and um, if this show has taught me anything, it is that if a character is happy, something bad is going to happen. <laughs> uh, I really don't hope. I, like, I really hope that this doesn't come to ha come to pass. But um, yeah, that's my prediction. And my third prediction for season three is that uh, the mayor of Sunnydale will become a big player. Um, and I'm basing this off the fact that Snyder seems to keep mentioning him in season two. And um, I'm, I'm, I just sort of felt like it was subtle crumbs, like maybe he was going to be, I don't know, the next big bad or something. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Um, we'll just have to watch the whole season to find out. Maybe he ends up being a good guy, or... I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But I just know that he'll be a major... Well, I think he'll be a major player in season three. Um, so those are my predictions. That is my thoughts and your questions. So I hope you guys... Uh, enjoyed this long ass video and <laughs> um, I will see you in the next reaction video.